Hello, I'm Adrian and some of you might have seen a recent video I did looking more generally at the guitar style of Steve Cropper. What I thought I'd do today is continue in that kind of vein and look at a complete Steve Cropper song. And the song that I've chosen is the mighty classic that is Soul Man as played by Sam and Dave. And for me, this is what guitar playing is all about. It's a fantastically catchy and well-constructed piece of rhythm guitar. It's groovy, it's funky, and it's, it's kind of perfectly formed in every way, I think. So um, irrespective of what style of music you're into, I think that any guitar player would really benefit from learning this song. There's an awful lot you can get out of it. So let's get going. I'm gonna take you through how to play the song from start to finish. Okay, starting predictably enough then with the introduction. <laughs> And uh, when you see Steve Cropper playing this, this song live these days, he, he introduces it by saying that it's one of those songs that you can identify just with the first two notes. Um, which is absolutely true. As soon as you hear that, um, you, you know what, what song it's going to be. Um, so this introduction then, it's, it's all made up with these six that I was talking about in my last video. Um, the entire introduction is just played using this major sixth shape played on the first string and on the third string. And we're just moving that around, sliding between these shapes to, uh, to outline the, the chord progression at the start of the song. So um, the, the chords we've got at the start of the song, kind of the, the underlying harmony, we've got G, two, three, four to F, then B flat, two, three, four, and then two beats on C, two beats on D. That's the, that's the harmony of the introduction. And what Steve Cropper is doing is he, he's outlining those chords by just playing a pair of notes, um, this, this sort of major, major sixth shape. Um, so starting off by um, sliding into this shape here at the seventh fret. It's the seventh fret on the third string, seventh fret on the top string. I, I'm playing those notes with my second finger and my third finger. So I'm picking the third string at the fifth fret first. Sorry, I'm sliding up to the seventh fret and then picking the, the top string. Uh, you can do that with the pick. Or what I think Steve Cropper does is he plays the, the, uh, the third string with the pick and then catches the, the top string with the, the middle finger of his picking hand. So that's our first sixth shape. And that outlines the sound of that G chord. Um, in kind of theory terms, we're playing the, uh, the fifth of G, which is uh, this D note here, and we're playing a B as well, which is the third uh, of G. So it's, it's perfectly fitting that, that G sound. You could, if you like, see that sixth shape as being part of this G major triad, this kind of D, D chord shape played up here in the seventh position, just playing the outside pair of notes in that shape, and you've got the fifth and the third of the G chord. So uh, that's, that's what's happening to start with. Uh, then we're sliding down to the fifth fret and those two notes are outlining the sound, sound of an F chord there. We've got a C and an A. Then we're sliding up to the 10th fret. Uh, that's outlining the, the B flat chord sound. And then finally we're going up to the 12th fret and then up to the, to the 14th fret. Um, and that's giving us the C and the, the D. So that's the, that's the introduction. Let me just play that slowly in time. Um, notice the way that he's kind of going between the third string and the, and the top string, sliding nice and smoothly between these shapes. We've got this kind of thing. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. possibly hear a little, little bit of vibrato on that as well if you want to to add that in so that that's the introduction up to you how closely you want to get how close you want to get to the original recording I think that's more or less how it's played on the original recording but uh, you know as long as you're hitting the right shapes at the right time and outlining that chord progression you can probably just improvise a little bit with the rhythm and, and the way you go between the top string and, and the third string. 
On then to the main riff then, that uh, goes like this. Um, fa fantastic riff this one. Um, the essence of it is very simple. We've just got three little three note chord shapes, uh, but quite tricky to get this grooving and, and sounding as, as funky as, as, as Steve does. But um, um, I'll, I'll do my best to sort of show you, show you how it's done. Um, we, we're dealing with three little chord shapes here. We've got this G triad, uh, barring across the top two strings at the third fret with my index finger, and then I'm playing a B at the fourth fret on the third string. Uh, then we're going up to this shape here, which is another G triad. We've got the seventh fret on the third string, eighth fret on the second string, seventh fret on the top string. So it's just like a D chord shifted up to the to the seventh position. Uh, and then just in passing, we've got this little shape here. It's just a three three note shape. The fifth fret on the the top three strings on the E, B, and G strings. So. Um, I, I suppose it's uh, it's like an A minor triad there, but in, in this context, it's probably played played against a C or a G. So I'm not quite sure what, what that makes it, but it's just a little connecting shape, I suppose. So we're going from this G to this G, and this little passing shape, uh, and back to the back to the starting shape. So that's what's going on in the left hand. The interesting thing here is what's going on in the right hand. This is what makes it groove. Uh, and what makes it funky. So um, a little bit tricky this, I think. So I'm just gonna take you through this very slowly, beat by beat, just so you can uh, build up the exact uh, rhythm that uh, that Steve is, is playing here. So um, on the first beat, we've got this. Um, it's kind of an underlying 16th note groove. So you, if, if the beat is one, two, three, four, you wanna be feeling four subdivisions on each of those beats, that kind of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And on beat one, you're playing uh, the first 16th note subdivision, so right on beat one, and then on the fourth 16th note subdivision as well. So if you're counting 16th notes like many people do, one E and a, uh, you're gonna be playing this G chord on the one and on the a, uh, the one E and a, uh, so the last 16th note subdivision. So we've got this kind of sound, two, three, four. Um, and just squeezing that chord down with your left hand when you want the chord to sound. So on the one and on the uh. And for all of this riff, I'm gonna suggest that you just keep your right hand moving up and down in that 16th note rhythm. Um, um, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a super scratchy sounding guitar part like some of the funk stuff you hear, but I think it's good just to keep that hand moving and maybe have a few little ghost notes and scratches in there just to help with the, with the rhythm. So um, once again, beat one goes like this. You've got one E and a, one E and a. So you're playing down on one, a couple of little ghost strums in there and up down and then up again on that last 16th of beat one. Beat two then, we're shifting up to this shape here, the, the, the high G triad shape, um, and we've got this. Something like that. So here we're playing, we're not playing on uh, beat two itself, we're playing on the E and A uh of beat two. So it's two E and A. Uh. So not playing on beat two, you might just have a, a downward scratch there, two E and A. Uh. On the E ander, you're just gonna squeeze down the chord shape um, to, to, to create that kind of rhythm. Um, Steve Cropper seems to be varying this a little bit. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's, you're not hearing that last upward strum, but it's, it's okay, I think, to, to, to vary that a little bit. So that's beat two, two E and. So beats one and two together, we've got Um, and that's really the hardest bit. Beats three and four are easy because we're just playing, um, we're playing three, three and four. We've got the G uh, triad played once, the fifth fret shape play, played once, and then we're back to the first shape. 
um, rhythmically that's on beat three, the and of three, and on beat four. So three. Um, all of those played quite staccato, so you're just squeezing down the chord shape with your left hand and then releasing pressure straight away. So if I piece all of that together, the, the, uh, the riff should start to take shape. Just very slowly, we've got this one, two, three, four. Notice I'm just keeping my right hand moving all the way on this. I think that's really important if you want to get this to groove. Keep a really loose wrist, a loose right hand, and just keep that moving throughout this. That kind of thing. I mean, if you want to get really, really kind of fussy about it, I can even detect a little bit of a swing in the feel in the right hand as well. It's all, almost a kind of... That's exaggerating it a little bit, but it's, it's not quite sort of straight 16th notes. So it's, um, if you want to listen to the recording um, for that, and you, you might be able to get uh, a bit bit closer to exactly what, what Cropper is doing here. But it's, um... but, but that's the riff. Take it slowly to start with, really focus on getting the, the right hand picking correct and focus on getting the rhythm right, and then gradually build up speed. For the chorus then, we're back to these six shapes uh, outlining the basic harmony. So the, chord-wise, in the chorus we've got G for four beats, F for four beats, and then we're back to G again uh, for four beats plus another four beats, so two, two, two bars, um, and then that whole, whole chord progression repeats. And what Steve is doing is just outlining those two chords with a pair of six. So over the G chord, uh, we're playing at the seventh fret there and then just sliding it down two frets to the fifth fret to, 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 to play over the F chord. So this is the G, G kind of sound and the F sound there. And uh, what he's doing is just going between those two shapes, kind of sliding between them, uh, varying where he's picking the, the third string or, or the top string or both of them together just to kind of create a nice smooth flowing gu guitar part. So uh, uh, it starts off like this. We've got two, three, four. So I think we're starting just with this little G triad. Then we're sliding into the seventh fret sixth shape. Sliding twice down from the seventh fret to the fifth fret as we go to the F chord. Then we're back back to the seventh fret for the G chord. Um, and then just in that break in the phrase, you, you can hear these high notes. And uh, on the original recording, uh, it sounds to me like they're played um, using a slide. Uh, but when you see Steve Cropper play this song live these days, he, he tends to just fret these notes normally. So it's, it's up to you how you do that. You could, could use a slide to play these notes. Um, not sure how that was done on the original recording, whether it was uh, just an, an overdub that that Steve Cropper did separately from the main guitar part, or whether he was doing doing that sort of live with, with the rest of the, the, the guitar part. But um, yeah, up to you how, how you do that. I think it sounds good just to fret those notes normally, actually. Uh, then we're into the second half of the chorus, uh, and we've got one, two, three. More of this sliding between the seventh fret and the fifth fret. And then back up to the seventh fret. And then just a little, a little fill leading back into the verse, just a single note part, which is doubling what the, the horn section is, is doing. I can't really hear whether Steve Cropper is doing this on the uh, original recording, but it's, it's certainly something that he does live in it, and it works really well. So I'm just playing the third fret on the fifth string, sliding up to the seventh fret, and then I've got the fifth fret on the fourth string, and fifth fret on the fifth string just to round off the, the chorus. The entire chorus, slowly then, two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, three. 
One, two, three. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Something like that. I think that's more or less what's played on the original recording. Up to you how closely you want to emulate exactly what he's playing on the original recording. Um, I will write it out in music and tab exactly as it's played, but then uh, probably a better approach would just be to uh, you know, play the right shapes in the right places, but improvise a little bit with the feel and, and with the rhythm and uh, make it your own a little bit. So after that, we're back to another verse, exactly the same as before, then a second chorus. And on the second chorus, uh, Steve Cropper is kind of playing the similar kind of thing to the first chorus, but it's not exactly the same. He's varying the rhythm a little bit, varying the way he's articulating those six shapes. So uh, once again, listen to the original recording if you want to exactly copy what he's doing there. But best policy is probably just to kind of improvise it and do it your own way. After the second chorus, then we've got a little kind of bridge section, uh, which goes something like this. We've got which, which then leads us into a, a key change. So this is fairly straightforward here. We're just using bar chords for the most part. We've got this E flat bar chord here at the sixth fret. It's a kind of A form bar chord. Going to a B flat bar chord played at the sixth fret with a, with a six string root. Moving that shape up two frets to a C bar chord. Uh, then we've got these nice couple of chords. It's a, I'm playing a C chord here. Tenth fret on the fourth string, ninth fret on the third string, eighth fret on the second string. And I'm pull up putting a D in the bass. And I, I like to do that by just playing my thumb over the top like that. So we've got the, the uh, low E string at the 10th fret, just muting the fifth string, and then got those notes on the, the fourth, third, and second string. So it's, it's a C with a D in, in the bass. You could, if you're not comfortable with that whole thumb over the top thing, you could refinger it and play it like that. But I, I quite like the thumb over the top thing. So we've got this chord here which is uh, C over D, and then we're just moving that up one fret, which is uh, a kind of D flat over E flat. Now, the, the rhythm here is, is, is the, the interesting thing, I think. We've got this kind of... So we're, we're playing, uh, we've got a bar on the E flat chord. It's, again, it's this 16th note -y kind of feel. We're playing on beat one, and then the last 16th note of that beat as well. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and the same thing on beat three. So again, it's, it's easiest if you just keep your right hand moving, feeling those 16th notes. So a bar on the E flat, the same thing on the B flat, same thing on the C. And when you reach the C over D, I think the rhythm goes to more of an eight note feel. It's something like this. Kind of staccato eight note, eighth note. So I'm just kind of bouncing my, my left hand there to cut some of those chords, chords short. So the, the entire bridge a bit faster, two, three, four. So again, just keep keep your right hand moving. You can have some little ghost notes and scratches in there. You don't want it to be super scratchy like a, a funk guitar part, I don't think. So just kind of keep those scratches fairly light. But I think you do need that in there just to, to help you keep the groove and, and the timing. After the bridge then, we have ourselves a key change and we hear the introduction to the song again, but it's all played one fret higher. Uh, for the most part, this song is in the key of, of G but after the bridge, everything just moves up one fret to the key of A flat. Uh, and we hear the introduction again. Something like that, but all just one fret higher than the, the actual introduction. Uh, again, you can listen to the recording if you want to capture some of the details and nuances of exactly how he plays it, but essentially it's exactly the same as the introduction at the start of the song, one fret higher. Um, then we're nearly there, outro of the song is just the main riff 
again played one fret higher. So we're now in the key of A flat. So we're starting with this shape here, the A flat shape at the fourth fret, going up here to the, uh, to the eighth fret, a little passing shape at the sixth fret. Um, everything else is e exactly the same. The rhythm is the same. And that just repeats till the, the fade out at the end of the song. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Soul Man. For me, the best way to practice this kind of thing, once you've got the basic parts together, is to try playing along to the original recording. That way you can really work on soaking up the feel and the incredible groove on that original. You can work on getting from section to section smoothly and you can actually piece together the entire song from start to finish. So that's the way I recommend you practice this song. I um, hope you've enjoyed looking at this one. I hope it's inspired you to maybe look at some more Steve Cropper. There are plenty more great Steve Cropper guitar parts where this one came from. So maybe have a go at figuring some of those out for yourself. But uh, that's it for today. And I hope to see you for some more of these kind of videos very soon. Bye bye.